Are we ready to explore some of the thinkers during the French Enlightenment? If there's anyone who speaks French in the room and would like to correct my French, be my guest. You know, I don't, I don't pretend to speak any more French than I really do. Let's start with Pierre, Peter, Peter Bale. So Pierre, we see that the dates of when he lived, and we'll, we'll sort of compare how it is that we're going to be going forward in time, more or less. So we'll start with earlier thinkers first. Pierre Bale was the influential French writer who prepared the way for the Enlightenment. So he was a Protestant. Oh boy, his journey was something. He was first a Protestant, then a Catholic, then Reformed Protestant. So he just he he, he experienced a lot of religions. What did he conclude at the end of it? Uh, at the end of it all, you know what? Can't we all just get along? Mm -hmm. We probably have more in common than that which will ever divide us. So he became an advocate of tolerance thinking that, uh, that toleration should take place of controversy, and he attacked the intolerant. How is that? He was intolerant of intolerant people. He could not tolerate intolerant people. He said, religious truths contain much that is repugnant to reason. That's a tough one. Open up your Bibles. This is going to be during the, the, the French and German Enlightenment. And we're going to see people start to open up the Bibles and say, there's certain things that don't make sense. Should I even give you an example? The example is of Jesus, <coughs> Jesus walking on water. We've studied the natural world. Isaac Newton and all these people are coming up with all these laws of nature, and they are proving how it is that we cannot walk on water. Why can we not walk on water? Because in physics, we call it buoyancy force. Which simply means that water has, if, if, there's, if water pushes up on a boat, for instance, when, it, when the boat is in the water, the boat goes into the water, but the water is trying to return to its original form, so the water pushes up on the boat. That's what keeps boats afloat. Well, when you, when you float, and when, you, when you're in the water and you float on the water, have you ever tried to float on the water? When you spread out your body over the water, the water is pushing up on your body and you float. Got news for you, you can't float on the soles of your feet. You can't. There's not enough buoyancy force to hold you up. But the Bible says that Jesus walked on water. Yikes. So it's during this time that our friends of the French and German Enlightenment are going to start taking their markers... And they're going to start going through the Bible and crossing out everything that is miraculous and everything that is supernatural because it doesn't fit with their view of the world. We might remember that from our course in Christology. People like Remaris, he was the first one. Remaris was the first one to, to begin taking his pen and, and crossing out everything about Jesus that seemed not natural, not human. Any miracle story... We're crossing it out. And we're going to try to find the real Jesus. Baal separated religion, again, theology. He separated religion from, from reason and morality. So we're starting to see this separation, right, between ethics and other things like religion and theology and metaphysics. He said, religious motives are not necessary for living a moral life. Those of you who are good because you're going to heaven, that's what you believe. You don't need heaven or hell to be good or bad. Let's just think through this. If there weren't a heaven or hell, could we come up with the rules by which we would be good or bad? He ended up with the conclusion that non-religious motives for good behavior can be just as strong as religious motives. Even atheists can be good people. How's that for a theory? Even if you're an atheist, you can still be a good person. He said a moral society can consist of people who don't believe in God or immortality. Even if you don't believe in things like God or the soul or heaven, you can still live as good people. In fact, we're going to see a later writer who said probably people who don't believe in these things are better people. Yikes. He said, take as, as an example, the, the Sadducees. Do you remember in the Bible, Jesus came up against the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Who were the Pharisees and the Sadducees? How, what, was, what were some of the things that made them different? The Sadducees did not believe in the afterlife. 
When you die, you die. What did the Pharisees believe in? The afterlife. Interesting. And in the Bible, who is the better of the two? Sadducees. Follow me? Jesus denounces the Pharisees, you hypocrites. They were the ones who believed in heaven and hell, and yet they were the worst of all those people. So that's essentially what Pierre Bale is saying. He said, read your Bibles, people. If they were the atheists and the believers back then, the Pharisees would have been the believers in the afterlife. Sadducees, no. Who are the better people? Who are the better people? Sadducees. 